Hello everyone and welcome to our second stream of this 2017. Um, yeah, hello. Athens Regionals is coming up this weekend, so let's try and find some good games, shall we? Now, if there's any deck requests you guys might have, definitely let me know. Um, I've been trying out the Turbo Dark deck so far and I'm liking it. Um, it's really, really consistent. It hits so hard and so fast. And with the experience shares, you get to um, you get to conserve your energy and everything. So um, I don't know. I really, really like it. I really like it. <sighs> so looks like we're up against a dark deck as well, with pure um, shaman support apparently. Pure shaman support. Okay, and we get an absolutely atrocious start. Is it not streaming for you guys? I mean, there's a little bit of delay, but it should be... Um, it should be showing now. Is it not showing? Um, hey, like a bill. Um, any thoughts for Georgia yet? Well, I, I firmly believe that, like, um, the the cops right now the league cups are really messing up with the meta game like it's gonna be really really complicated to to decide what to play okay i'm gonna attach to shaman because i want to conserve energy and i still have a ton of energy and yeah so glad it's working now for you shun okay so ah uh, my window doesn't work want to work properly okay Maracas, hello and huh. I'm gonna play down the Hoopa and I'm gonna search out for Dark Rise. So yeah, like Lee Cups are really um are really messing up with the meta game I believe. Like it's gonna be really really hard to determine what to play uh, for Georgia because I mean I know like Lee Cups in Washington probably won't end up affecting or moving the meta game too too much. It's still, um, still going to be a really, I don't know, a really interesting tournament. Like, I feel like there's like anything could win it. It's gonna be, it's it's gonna come down to matchups, as pretty much it's always been. But like, you could play Greninja and 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 um, probably do well. You could play Volcanion and probably do well. You could play Mega Guardian and probably do well. You could play Mega Mewtwo, you could play Darkrai Giratina, Turbo Darkrai. It's like there's there's very um there maybe I should have played the reverse valley because this is a mirror match. Um yeah it's gonna be really difficult to to actually figure out like the correct decks. I think it's gonna be really difficult to figure that out. And now I regret attaching that floatstone. Maybe I should have just discarded the two the two darkness. Um, I mean, I can lie under to start chipping at this dark guy. But yeah, um, thoughts for Georgia is that it's gonna be a mess of a meta game. Like it's gonna be all over the place. It's really, really gonna be all over the place. Um, are you going to come to regional in Brazil? I wish I could. Um, I If it wasn't Sao Paulo, I would probably go, but Fortaleza is a really difficult place to get to from Mexico City. Like, there's no direct flights. And hello, Matt Dog. Um, there's no direct flights to Fortaleza. I have to go through Sao Paulo, and it's a $400 flight. So I think I'm better off um 
I think I'm better off just going to more regionals in the United States. And I already have a, a plane ticket booked for Anaheim, which is the weekend after that regional. So even though I do feel it's going to be an easier regional because um, because there's not going to be 500 players like in Anaheim or in Athens, um, I still think... Um, like I still won't go if it was in maybe Rio or Sao Paulo then I would maybe consider going but in Fortaleza it's just impossible and Harue um, welcome thank you for becoming a table lever and Alchemix Rex hello yeah three more days for Athens I'm pretty excited um Kwehiwa, hello and thoughts on Stall Ninja what do you mean Stall Ninja um, Greninja with Faded Town and Silent Lab will be at least in top 16. Yeah, I think Greninja is going to be incredibly popular. Like, really, really big popular. Um, yeah, I do agree it's going to be really, really popular. So, I generally don't know how to play out this mirror match, but I also think this deck is getting a ton of hype. And even though I don't think it should be, like... Mega Guardian, Mega Mewtwo under standard conditions. Um, it's definitely gonna see play, and I think Gyarados is also gonna make a comeback. So, um, yeah, the Greninja was just an uh, Absolution MX. Hello and welcome. Um, thank you for becoming a table lever. The Greninja with just Silent Lab, Max Potion. Well, that's pretty much the standard Greninja now. The Talonflame Lists with Silent Lab and Max Potion. Um, I feel like it's it's a really good deck. Like um, I've been running Greninja down here because nobody has Giratina, so I'm not too worried about that. Wow, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oh, he's gonna KO me, and I only have three energy to his five, which is not good news. Well, I'm gonna be left with three energy to his five. Um, wow. Okay. Oh boy. Yep. Not good news for us. Um, things are definitely not going well for us at the moment. Um, I think I still need to attack with the Veltal. I get back the Darkness. I get to attach more Darkness. And what I really need is to find um, the EXP shares. So yeah, like what you're calling Stall Ninja, I think it's a really good choice as well. Um, it's a really, really, really viable choice for this upcoming weekend. I feel like we're going to see a ton of that kind of Greninja, like a ton of that kind. Um, no more max elixirs for us, which sucks. Um, I'm gonna attach this here, and then I could go for another Shaman, but I definitely don't think that's the right play. Um, I do have a potential three Darkrai versus his two Darkrai. So if I'm able to to get a KO on this Darkrai the next turn, if I'm able to deal 160 damage, which I 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, yeah, I need one Max Elixir. I need to hit one Max Elixir off of the next Sycamore I'm going to use and hit it so that I can KO that Darkrai. And that's going to be huge, I think. So yeah, Stall Ninja is a really good deck, a really good choice for next weekend. Um, it beats Mega Gardevoir, it beats, it beats Volcanion, especially with the inclusion of Silent Lab. Um, I have not decided on a play yet. I'm really liking this Turbo Darkrai deck, and I'm also really liking Mega Mewtwo. Um, now, I'm really torn between using the, the metal version of Mega Mewtwo with like Magyarna EX, or um, simply going with... Okay, he decides to switch. Okay, um, that's fair. So we're gonna play chicken, are we? Okay, so I mean, I do have. Okay, so I guess we're gonna both play chicken and M Dude. Hello, thank you for being here. Um, I'm gonna all trouble away the dark. And the Ultra Ball. I just want um, to get the energy in the discard pile. I have two Max Elixirs left and I have five energy still in my deck. So, yeah, like both versions of Mega Mewtwo really appeal to me. 
in the sense that the metal version aims to oh, I didn't even draw an energy for a turn come on I can't lag behind like that I really can't one two three four five six seven eight eight energy nine with his stadium and the fighting fury belt okay um really needed an energy right here I really needed to attach an energy I can't believe I didn't get one, one two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ugh, that was so bad um, so yeah both of those versions of Mega Mewtwo are really appealing the damage change version I feel is a really solid choice um, especially after seeing how Igor Costa pretty much dominated okay so the delinquent play here might be nice um, he does go for the Oblivion Wing. I do have a switch. He doesn't get back energy, which is obviously great. And I top the kind of energy. Okay, so I'm gonna delinquent him down to one card, and then I get the benefits of Reverse Valley now. Okay, I want it like this, and then. And then, now I'm dealing 40 damage, he deals 30 back. Um, okay, I'm gonna attach an energy to this Eveltal, I guess. And then, I really had... Um, I really wish I had a Versus Seeker for a Lysander. Um, hello Maggi and hello Daft. And Okay. I generally don't know if I should take the KO here or not. I generally don't know. I mean, I'm not taking the KO, of course, but... I feel I'm not entirely sure if that was the right play or not. Um, everyone's down to two cards. So basically, I just I need to KO three Xs, just like he does, and wow. He finds... The Sycamore, either he kept that or he top decked that. And hola, Jacobos. <clears throat> ah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So a fighting fear belt on the active. Okay. Um, he still doesn't KO, which is obviously great. And. He does get that energy back though. I top deck an energy, okay. How many energy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Plus his attachment for turn. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to play the Team Flare Grunt and I'm going to switch out into the other baby Veltal. That way I take a go with this Veltal. like in a few turns and then um, that way I can maybe buy some time to find a sycamore and if he plays something like a like an escape rope I can just sacrifice this 120 damage Tibeltal which is no big deal so yeah um, who do you think is the best player on Latin America um, I think there's quite a few players who who could um, like qualify for that title? Um, okay, so my brand found the switch. But yeah, I, I do think there's quite a few players that could qualify for the title. Um, there's Diego Casiraga from Argentina. There's um, Gabriel Semedo from Brazil. Um, Oh, you're kidding. My opponent had the Lysander first. No way. Ah, oh, man. Every time I'm, I'm one turn short. Now I won't even get the KO, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I have a, a, a chance to... 
to maybe say that I'm one of the best players in Latin America, but um, I didn't do too well at the international. You had Fabricio Bellucci doing the best out of all the Latin Americans, so definitely he also has an argument, a good argument to for you to consider him. So yeah, um, there's quite a few, quite a few players who could. Um, who could say they're either the best or close to the best? And okay, so we get a KO here. A pretty big KO. But... Um, unless I find a versus Seeker... Okay, I find an escape rope. Which is decent. Wow, my opponent actually promotes that event. I am okay with that, I think. I am actually okay with that. I can heal off the damage and do you think you can crees que puedas tener un buen deck solo jugando pues sí jugando muchísimo pero sí um, try adding in dark patch <laughs> I wish I could but I can't in standard um, okay so <sighs> what's my play here my opponent has zero cards in his hand. He has zero cards in his hand. If I escape rope, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine energy in play. So that dark Darkrai can KO me, right? No matter what. Um, I, of course, cannot hit a versus Seeker. I cannot hit a versus Seeker. So I don't think I can win here because if I take a KO, he still has 2, 4, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 energies. Well, he's actually 10 damage short. He will actually be 10 damage short. Um, okay, so I want to use this. But, yeah, and I, I can't play the escape rope. I have to take a KO here. So I'm dealing 220 damage. But I absolutely need... Um, a versus Seeker here or something. And, and not great. Definitely not great. The issue is my opponent is keeping all his energies. That's a big issue here. Okay, so he promotes Darkrai. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He's dealing. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. He top decked. He actually topped. Top decked a Sycamore. And he takes his time in benching and attaching. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous, guys. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Wow. I am in shock, honestly. I am in shock. I couldn't get the verse seeker, and my opponent did get. He top decked the sycamore for the energy for the win. Anyways, let's move on to Mega Gardevoir. Let's move on to Mega Gardevoir. Uh, that was honestly very heartbreaking. That was very heartbreaking to see. Um, I don't think we could have won anyways. But... Uh, but... um. I don't know. Ah, uh, that was rough. Hello, Metal Silver Dark. Uh, oh well. Let's try Mewtwo, which I'm really liking a lot more. I'm really liking a lot more. Ah, uh, that was so annoying. That was so freakishly annoying. <laughs> That was heartbreaking. If that happens at a tournament, I would absolutely 
lose my mind. Franco, indeed. I am completely devastated. Okay, so we are up against um, Vespequin, which I am not a huge fan of um, as a deck, but also to face off against. So let's find our Hoopa. Um, yeah, I've had to do that um, a few times, Daft, where I have to do full reinstalls. Um, in order for the game to to work, top table months, bad luck table one. Yep, I mean it happens. Um, it's not the first time that something like that happens. It's not gonna be the last. Um, I'm gonna play the shaman before the trainer's mail because that way trainer's mail reaches just a little bit further. Um, I do find the floatstone, which I was kind of hoping for. Um, I can limit my opponent's bench, which I think is pretty big. And then the other full stone I can attach to the Hoopa. And now let's see if this Trainer's Mail does find us an in, which is perfect. Absolutely perfect. And hello Kusanagi, thank you for being here. Um, Roman, I don't understand what you're... What you're trying to say. Um... Even though it's in Spanish, I actually don't understand what you're trying to say. And I feel as if my Trubbish should be fine here, but I'm still gonna retreat into Hoopa just in case. And let's just pass here. Um, I could go for a Shaman and keep setting up or things like that, but I don't think it's too necessary. And I'm better off um, conserving their resources. So yeah, pretty pretty okay starts. And hello Goose, thank you for being here. Um, huh. So my opponent goes for an ultra. I could have also played a hex. I mean, there was a good argument to play hex. Maybe that was the correct play. Um, oh yeah, Boshi, you asked. Um, Voy a algún pre-release? No, and hasta ahorita no tengo planeado ir a ninguno. I might go to one, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, do you do pure battles? I'd like to fight. Um, I I would love to do viewer battles, but I feel like it's gonna take a very long time to do so. Um, like. Okay, let me let me do this first. Um, viewer battles. I would love to do viewer battles, but then I have to add a ton of people to to the marketing account, and then I know that sometimes when like if I log on, I get a ton of requests to get um, battles going and things like that. So I'm not gonna do them today. Maybe I'll do them after the regionals, but today I really rather um just focus on the ladder but if you want um you can check like when i finish a game and search in the ladder and maybe we'll be able to to get matched all right so not today but maybe maybe some other day okay now i'm gonna play the hex maniac only because i want to prevent the annoying cleft keys and that might force my opponent's shaman to just stay in the active slot and I'm not going to play the Shaman. I will wait a turn in order to play it. And there we go. So, so yeah, guys, I hope you understand that um, it's more of a logistics kind of thing. But if you guys want to like go on the stream right now, or rather go on PTCGO and. Um, and look for a battle when I click on search for the ladder and try to match up, then I would definitely encourage you guys to do that. Okay, so... See, the thing is, I can start drawing prizes, but I can also just take this turn to Mega Evolve. Um, my Hoopa is not threatened at all. His Clef Key is pretty much stuck there in the active slot, so I'm gonna take the turn to, to Mega Evolve. Um, yeah, like I, I also know I need to configure Twitch so that it's easier to do viewer battles because it's, it's also a thing for VGC. 
So I'm sure there's somewhere, some way, somehow rather, where the chat can just like input x command and then you get um, you get chosen for a, or you get entered into a raffle and then I can pick someone from there and that would be a lot easier. Um, so so I'll try to do that after the regionals. Like I'll try to implement that afterwards because I'll have like almost more than a month. Um, between Athens regionals and Anaheim regionals where I can set everything up and stream regularly and things like that so after the regional everything should should um, should improve and I want to keep improving on the on the streams this is only the second stream I've done ever and um, it's only the second stream I've done ever and obviously I want to, to improve and I know viewer battles are definitely something that a lot of people are looking forward to so um, just be patient and it will come I promise you it will be it will be I think in the near future in the very near future and metal silver dark um, if I do go to a pre-release I'd probably go to the game smart one as well and because of um, because of how um i mean we just take a ko here on the vespiquin do i even need to do anything else i just i'm gonna look for the garb uh oh garb is priced that's right whoopsies garb is priced okay doesn't matter um the clef keys are not really that big of a threat and no this is like i've done a few streams before but like this year i plan on streaming on a consistent basis every wednesday so people can know when to find me and where to find me every single wednesday at night and that's the plan so this is like i'm finally streaming on a regular schedule that's the that's the plan <laughs> And yeah, guys, um, what deck would you like to see after this? Um, <laughs> okay, after this, after this deck, definitely leave me suggestions in the chat if you want. Eh, metal, que si voy a algún pre-release, voy al de GameSmart. Si es que me decido a ir. Y pues igual y si me decido por los, um, por lo, por la nueva expansión y así, yo creo que sí valdrá la pena. Um, I've been recently in a lot of matches against a Typhlosion deck. Is this deck really competitive or people play it just because it's cheap? Um, the Typhlosion deck is mostly for fun, honestly. Um, people play it online because it doesn't require shamans and it can get you some wins, like here and there. So, like against the top decks. So it's actually viable for like um, to grind the ladder, if you will. It's a fast deck, um, either you lose quickly or you win quickly. So I think that's why people people use it. Um, I recommend it if you want to have like a, a different style of deck and you want to just have some fun, but definitely don't recommend it for a tournament. Definitely don't recommend it for a tournament. Um, uh, Rainbow. <laughs> yeah, Dark Rise Elements. Okay, I'll use Dark Rise Elements afterwards. That seems fair. Eh, pues sí, te aviso, Metal. Te aviso si o voy a poner si si, si me lanzo al pre-release. <laughs> yeah, the Bruxish, bro, the Bruxy, Bruxy, Bruxish, Bruxish. <laughs> I can't pronounce that. The new Sun and Moon promos, the pre-release promos. Um, obviously, Oranguru is one that a lot of people want to. Are the one that a lot is the one that a lot of people will want. Um, I don't think the others are too too playable, but hey, you can't always have base at Charizard um, as a promo, you know. <laughs> um, didn't someone top eight a leak up with Typhlosion? Uh, yeah, like I mean, I'm sure eventually you could, um, like, you could on a good streak do well with Typhlosion, Bird Boy, but. I mean, you'd have to really see how many people played in the League Cup and everything. Like, there's no reason for you, like, you couldn't get lucky, if you will, like, all five rounds and set up really nicely and hit all your energies and stuff. But I don't think it's a, a good deck choice for a regionals. Um, Gamer Lalo, thank you for becoming a table lever. 
And yeah, Poke Beach. Poke Beach is where I always get my Pokemon news, honestly. There and Bobapedia. Mostly on Twitter, but that's the um, that's where I get most of my my info. Okay. So apparently we're up against Greninja, I believe. I think we're up against Greninja. Okay. Greninja, um, Octillery with Talonflame? Okay, it is Greninja. We don't know if it has Talonflame. It, he has Professor's Letter. Um, deck without Shaman yet, so it's Greninja Octillery, which makes sense. And I think I lost to it earlier today. <laughs> and like, uh, while I was testing during my lunch hour <laughs> at work, um, I... I, um... I believe I played against a Greninja Artillery. Okay, the triple versus Seeker tech is right here. And he does have Talonflame too. Um, the triple versus Seeker. And the Max Elixir whiff. <laughs> great start, guys. Absolutely great start. So, we might as well get rid of the two versus Seekers. Hopefully Hoopa isn't priced. Okay, it's not priced. Um, we definitely won't be using Salamence in this match. Definitely won't be using Salamence in this match. Um, let's find one Giratina, one Shaman, and one Darkrai EX. Yeah, I also miss Compressor, but like, there's no guarantee I would have Compressor in this hand. So even with that, um, I'd probably still be in quite a bit of trouble. But it's okay, we will manage. Um, well, there is a Sycamore. So, can I even afford to lose this many resources? I don't think I can. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna wait a turn to at least conserve one of the double dragon energies. Like losing the basic dark is not that big a deal. Losing the <laughs> burst seeker is really annoying. Because that, li that really limits my options in the late game. And like my recovery will also be shaky because I can just um, draw a verse seeker off of an N and Sycamore from that, but rather I'm gonna be forced to uh, I'm gonna be forced to to actually draw the the Sycamore. And my opponent plays a dive ball, goes for another Froki, which is the correct play, of course. Definitely the correct play. And there's an ultra ball for. Um, I mean, if he goes for a frogadier, I think no for remoraid. Okay, so must be nice to run both remoraid or rather artillery and town flame and to start town flame. Okay, so 40 damage. Now I really need to save that. Um, I really need to save that trubbish though. That damage on the Trubbish could actually be important. And hello, Mike Ever Pokemon. Thank you for stopping by. Um, see, the cool part here is that. Okay, that I top deck a Trainer's Mail, which gets me the Float Stone, which makes me happy. Um, I am susceptible to a Lysander. Definitely susceptible to that. But I'm gonna parallel CD and limit my opponent's bench. That way, even if he wanted to turn to water duplicates, he won't even be able to find the bench space for that. Um, he already didn't have enough space, but I can't find an elixir or a follow-up supporter. Oh gosh. I can't believe this is happening, guys. I genuinely can't believe this is happening. Ugh. Um, and yeah, Boshi, once, once the Sun and Moon cards are out, like, I'll definitely be reviewing a lot of, a lot of the GX cards. Okay, my opponent decides to retreat, go into the Frogadier, go into the Octillery, but if he doesn't find a Stadium, oh wow, he's gonna go on the offensive immediately. 
So we need water duplicates, right guys? If he plays four Froggy and the Octillery line, I'm gonna be really mad here. <laughs> I am actually going to be really mad. And he... Well, <laughs> oh gosh. You have got to be kidding me. You have generally got to be kidding me. Okay. I'm obviously going to attach energy to the Dark Cry. I will take a KO on the Octillery to avoid the Bursting Balloon damage. Um, I'm going to Ultra Ball away the energy and the Salamence. And find Garb to ensure that a Granger Break doesn't ruin our our day this upcoming turn. And do I play the Parallel CD or not? Because if I if Greninja only deals 40 damage, he will still need another shot to KO me. So that's pretty good. And that way I get rid of the Shaman and the Hoopa, which could be liabilities. And yeah, we're gonna deal 110 damage. So if he doesn't find the break, we can actually also KO the regular Greninja, which is obviously great news. And we remove his draw. I mean, uh, well, I probably should have KO'd the Froakie instead of the Octillery, because I have Garb. <laughs> That's actually... Ugh. Okay, well, now it's not looking too bad. <laughs> now it's not looking too bad. Especially if he doesn't have the break, which looks like he doesn't. Yep, it made more sense to take out the Froakie, but apparently I can see the future. <laughs> apparently I can see the future, and I knew he was going to have the Lysander for Garbodor, so I decided to... to KO the Octillery instead, so that he doesn't have access to Octillery. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... Maybe I'm a... I'm a psychic. <laughs> yes, every time the better play is to KO the Froki, I think. Because the odds of him having the Lysander are not very good. But turns out I did find the Lysander, so... Uh, I'm not gonna complain. And we Dark Pulse here. We actually could have Dark Pulse for 170, which is really nice to KO the break. And we're in a pretty good situation here. Yep, Future Sight. Um, it is very hard to choose a deck for Georgia. It is definitely very hard. And to the people in YouTube chat, Jose, Manuel, hello. Um, if you guys could transfer over to to Twitch, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna stop like doing the double streaming thing. Um, and just upload a video to announce that I'm streaming over on Twitch. I think that would be better. Um, <laughs> to not have the split audience. I like though that the, the stream gets saved automatically on YouTube as well. For future reference. Um, Caballero, yeah. I mean, if Querétaro and Celaya have get tournaments, I will be more than happy to, um, to go over there to play but since there haven't been any tournaments over there any time like in the near future or in the past in the recent past rather i haven't been able to to go okay that end top deck is absolutely marvelous and i'm actually not going to play the max elixir because i want to find another dark cry and save the max elixirs for that maybe um but yeah ending my opponent and removing the two cards that's pretty cool and the float I will attach to the Giratina and I'm just gonna take a KO here. I'm dealing so much damage, 190. And even if he finds a Greninja right here, he won't be able to KO my my Dark Cry, which is pretty awesome. Um He does find the Greninja. And yeah, I'm even reducing my reducing his damage off of the parallel CD, so I mean, even if that wasn't happening, I'd still be okay. I have 20 HP left. Y el Cusi, muchas gracias <laughs> por estar por aquí, aunque, aunque, o practicando tu inglés. 
<laughs> and Fergus, thank you for becoming a table lever. Always hiccup. Yeah, I always, but notice that I always get one hiccup. I always get like just the one hiccup. Um, did you pretend went to Brazil to play in a championship? Um, I didn't pretend anything. Um, I want to go to Brazil to play the international if it does happen there. And yeah, let me grab my water. I do want to go to Brazil to play the international and I did live in Brazil for six months. Oh, there's no abilities. Whoops. <laughs> there's no abilities. I mean, there are abilities. Whoopsies. And I still get the KO back, I believe. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Yeah. Um, yeah, more official tournaments next season. That's always great to hear. Um, but yeah, I didn't pretend to go to Brazil at all. I lived in Brazil. I played a few tournaments there. And then I intend to go to Brazil. Um, to play the to play the to play the international tournament so okay so there we go there we go we get a win um, Greninja time um, yeah, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about the very few tournaments, but we are getting more. There's four official tournaments in January in Mexico, so that's pretty cool. Three League Cups and one League Challenge, which I did win, which was awesome. Um, let's do Volcanian now. Let's do Volcanian. Um, if you guys have deck requests, definitely leave them in chat, because I'm only playing, um, like standard decks right now because i want to like get a feel for every deck for georgia even if i don't end up playing something like volcanian um it's still always good to to use the decks even to use all the decks even if you're not going to use them in the, the actual tournament so that in different scenarios you can know or you can try to predict what your opponent is maybe thinking about and yeah i'll use greninja after this game mike ever i promise i will use greninja after this game Mm. I need to change the Greninja list though um, to use Silent Lab. I need to make a few changes to the Greninja list. So remind me so that I update um, <clears throat> so that I update my list. And Strict Nine, yep, I love Greninja as well. Hey, hello, David Allen. Um, I have a tech idea that you could try quickly too. Basically, take the mixed Brilliant Arrow and swap the card is out for Mega Mewtwo. Um, so like you mean Mega Mewtwo with Fairy Energy? Um, I have that built. I have that built. Um, Rainbow Road and Gyarados. Okay, I, I also want to update Gyarados. Um, Rainbow Road, I'm not a huge fan. I don't think it's consistent at all. I <laughs> don't know, I'm not gonna play Expanded. Um, but Gyarados, I do want to update with like the Lucky Helmets and everything. So I need to update Greninja and... Um, Greninja and Greninja and Gyarados. I have to update both of those and then I'll play Greninja and Gyarados after, okay? I can play Pidgeot as well. I can play I can definitely play Pidgeot as well. The ple the Pidgeot Jolteon deck. Mm. Okay. Um I mean I could try that like a bill, <clears throat> but I I don't think I want to try it right today because it seems too novelty and I don't think it's um, I don't think using an attack to attach extra energies to the Mewtwo's is better than just relying on the Mega Turbos alone and the DCs so I mean it, it, it seems a decent enough concept but it also seems super obvious in the sense that I'm sure a lot of people would be using it by now if it was um, like tournament viable so maybe for another stream sure um, I will definitely try it out but for today I'd rather stick to like the more standard um, standard options okay so we are up against Mega Altaria so speaking about non-standard options <laughs> um, I really don't want to use a max elixir 
on a Volcanian. Um, nor do I want to, like, the Fighting Fury build. Huh. Okay, I will attach the Fighting Fury build because I can KO Trubbish off of one Volcanian and one Fire Energy. Um, intent, okay, yeah, I do intend to go to Brazil for the International Championship. That's my, that's 100% my intention. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to doing that. Okay, so we do find a Volcanian, we do find an energy, and we can... Huh. I'm gonna get rid of the Sycamore and the Skyfield. I think maybe getting rid of the Skyfield is a mistake, but I really want to, like, not whiff. So I'm gonna grab Hoopa. And I'm gonna bench the Volcanian. I'm gonna use its ability. Um, I can also play Mega Gardevoir. Definitely, I can also play Mega Gardevoir. I do hit off of the Max Elixir. And then I'm going to Hoopa for another Volcanian EX and a uh, Shaman. Um, now I only have access to two Volcanians. But as long as I KO the Trubbish, that should be fine. That should actually be fine. Um, okay, so I do hit the energy. That's pretty cool. Um, yep, there's a lot of Mega Pokemon getting play right now. Um, and there we go. Power Heater onto the Trubbish. Um, so definitely... Um, using the Faded Town could actually be a good idea, but Silent Lab is pretty much a necessity right now because, and Bibaku, thank you for becoming a table leader, a table leader. Um, you need the Silent Lab because of Giratina, the promo. Um, the Giratina promo prevents all your old, po old break Pokemon from using ability, so it's like an immediate Garbodor onto your Greninja breaks, but one that you can counter off of the stadiums. Oh, I didn't kill the Trubbish. Oops. Ah, I, because I can't count. Oops. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on Vespicon Substrika? I feel like Vespicon Substrika. Um, I'm not a fan of Vespicon. Without Compressor, I'm, I generally don't think Vespicon is very good. Uh, Vespicon Substrika is like a really hard counter to... <sighs> That was really dumb of me, wasn't it? It's a really hard counter to... It's a really hard counter to Veltal, but that's pretty much it. And even then, um, it's not like an auto win because you need to stream the Substrikas. So I'm, I'm generally not a fan of the deck. Um, Alex Hill, who did well with that deck, um, like you see his report and rounds two to eight, where um against the volatile deck so between the novelty factor and the substrika like sure he did pretty well but um but i don't think like wow i really played that bad didn't i um <laughs> okay so i mean i can lie sander the garbiter once again and it's pretty much the only play i have <sighs> that was so bad guy <laughs> That was so bad. I thought I was dealing 70 damage. I generally thought I was dealing 70 damage. Um, and now I don't have an energy to KO the Garbiter once again, but nothing I can do about that. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on on Vespico and Substrika and on the Faded Town that you guys were asking. How long test your deck before an event? I test... Oh, he gets the Floatstone. Um, I test my decks... Um, I don't know, like, it a lot depends on the amount of free time I have. And wow, this is actually a double mega deck. <laughs> this is actually a double mega deck, and because I'm distracted with the chat, I didn't actually get the, the KO on the Garb. Ugh, that's really bad. That's really, really bad. Um, now, I deal 30 damage, 2 times 30 and then I deal 130 and that's still not enough to KO <laughs> wow Odino and Megaltaria 
Yeah, my open tech looks really clunky, but it's working better than mine. Um, <laughs> it's actually working better better than mine. Um, Bunnelby, yep. Uh, <laughs> Are there any cards that stop stadiums beside Giratina EX? Um, there's Ninetales. Um, there's a Ninetales from Roaring Skies, maybe? Or I don't know which sets. Wow. <laughs> My opponent has three Mega Evolutions, and they're not all the same Mega Evolutions. And he gets to heal because... <sighs> okay. I really messed up that beginning, so I'm just gonna concede here, guys. <laughs> and let's find a better match. Now I'm not gonna use Volcano. Let's update the Greninja and the Gyarados, shall we? So, let's update the Greninja. Oh, Ninetales is Primal Clash. Yeah, so Ninetales is the other card that is actually um, potentially viable. So, these are the changes I want to make. Um, I think I do want to play the four Silent Lab. Which is a holo. This one is a holo. Although maybe three is enough. Maybe I'll play three and two Lysander instead. Um, okay. So I do want to save with a complete incomplete Evo chain and then let's search for Gyarados. Wow, I don't even. Oh, I can't use Gyarados, guys. Because I don't have the, the Magma Stadium. So I can't use Gyarados. I actually cannot use Gyarados. I would have to switch accounts, and I really don't want to. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, Rainbow Road could be a good play for Athens with Ninetales and Giratina. Well, I I feel like that's um, getting too many things out for just the one deck. Um, like, sure you're hard countering Greninja, but then. Um, like the Ninetales conflicts with the Volcanion and the whole reason Rainbow Road can accomplish the really big numbers is because it has the easy dual type of a Volcanion and sometimes called Vantula so I mean even with that I don't think so and then like you have to you have to have the Ninetales beef and a counter stadium if they have a silent lab so you immediately need the Skyfield and the Silent Lab on the turn and, and the Skyfield and the Ninetale, sorry, on the turn you evolve. So what else counters Greninja? I mean it's Garb. Garb is the counter, but Silent Lab is necessary for those decks like Rainbow Road, which think they can just tech the the Giratina promo and and um and deal with with Greninja that way. Um like Volcanion could maybe consider running the Giratina. Um, do I want to keep this hand? I don't know what my opponent is playing. Okay, I won't take a mulligan here, but I'm gonna really think things through. Like I might get a turn three water duplicates on purpose. Depending on what my opponent flips over right here, or how his turn one goes, because I I don't want him to target my lone froki. You know, I don't want him to target my lone froki. Uh, what else counters Greninja? Mega Sceptile counters Greninja. Um, Glacian plus Garbodor counters Greninja as well, although that's very slow and you're kind of prone to to them finding Lysander um, to KO the Garb. Okay, so my opponent flips over as Zorua. Oh, it's another Vespiquen deck. You've got to be kidding me. So maybe there's gonna be a ton of Vespiquen. <laughs> maybe there's gonna be a ton of Vespiquen over at at Athens. I don't know. I generally don't know. Oh boy. So. I probably won't be able to last all three hours like previous Wednesday. Um, I've been trying to get like ahead on the videos and everything, so I haven't been sleeping too well. <laughs> so I'm really, really tired at the moment. So excuse me if you see me, John. Um, but yeah, like a lot of the a lot of the Greninja decks 
mentality right now is the fact that you you just accept the fact that you won't have abilities in most of your matchups. Um, Greninja has such a big target on its head, and like saying, I'm the best deck unless you counter me hard with Carpenter. Um, like now you play Greninja with the mindset of you're playing as, as an 170 HP Pokemon that gives up one price. Like that's the mindset you have to have when playing Greninja. Okay, so my opponent only has a Zerua as a threat, so he shouldn't be able to KO Froakie even if he Lysanders it up. So I should be good here for the turn to water duplicates. And we see no Frogadier price, no Greninja price, no Greninja break price, so all of that is really good news and I'm generally feeling really confident here. Um, wow. There's three basic water energy price. That's not nice. There's three basic water energy price. Um, I'm gonna grab a silent lab to prevent my opponent's shaman next turn. And I guess an N. Yeah, that seems like a good play. Maybe the Ace Trainer. Like, yeah, I'm gonna grab the Ace Trainer because I'm gonna turn to water duplicates and then that Frogadier is definitely going down. That Frogadier is definitely going down. So... Right now Mindjack deals 40 damage, which is perfectly fine. Um, the Silent Lab will stop more... <sighs> yeah, I can't believe I lost my win and in at Fort Wayne against Vespiguin Zorark. I generally can't believe it. Like, I drew so bad both games. Really should have made top 32 at Fort Wayne. But anyways... Um, okay, so there's a the Mindjack for 40 damage. That's perfectly fine. And now... There's a Frogadier, which will get KO'd, but I also have the... Um, the thing, the Splash. So I will immediately get it back, and then after the Frogadier gets KO'd, either by the really big bench or... Um, by a Vespiquen, then we can just Ace Trainer down my opponent to three cards with a Silent Lab in play. So that's really good. Um, okay, yeah, um, adapting to Giratina's ability is definitely easier, and that's why we're running Silent Lab now. That's definitely the reason why we are running Silent Lab. Um, yeah, Glash, Glacian Pidgeot instead of Jolteon Pidgeot, like, you take a worse um, Eveltal matchup, you take a better Greninja matchup, but I guess it makes sense. Um, I guess it makes sense. Um, you were at Fort Wayne? Yeah, I was at Fort Wayne, and I was playing my win and in and at table like 17 or something, I was 6 and 2, and I lost the last round which was very 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 sad not gonna lie it was really really sad okay so what do i do here do i attack with talonflame giving up a price card or do i attack with greninja and potentially give up a greninja um i think it's gonna be better to just go with the talonflame um, even if I don't get a KO, I can potentially set up two um, Greninja breaks the next turn and then Sycamore. Although I know I have very few basic energy. Um, so maybe I should take an attack. There's one DC left. There's one DC in my disc in my opponent's discard pile. He would lose another one. And he's already used up 3 Sycamore and 2 Verse Seeker. And he has a Snorlax. What the heck? <laughs> he has a Snorlax, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I have no idea why he has a Snorlax. But let's just Moonlight Slash for the KO. <laughs> yeah, losing, winning, and in suck. Really, really sucked. Um, I was this close and... Like, losing to Vespiguen was really disheartening. Um, I had already beat, like, Mega Mewtwo and Mega Scissor and all of that. Um, <coughs> I had already beat Eveltal during the rounds. 
I had the P drill tech for Carpador, which no one was really like, no one expected it. So they weren't really. Um, wow, he, he does he have two Snorlax? He has three Snorlax, guys. What? He has three Snorlax in his deck. He has three freaking Snorlax. <laughs> He finds the DCE. Ugh. Wow, 400 damage. And hello, Marietta. Thank you for stopping by. Okay, so that really sucked. And I should have promoted the break. I should have promoted the break. Okay. Yeah, that was a really noob mistake. <laughs> that was a really noob mistake. Okay. So let's evolve this guy, let's bench this guy, let's get rid of the DCE, and let's Aeroblitz. Um, Talonflame taking the damage is really no big deal. Um, let me check my discard pile, no basic water energy. So I'm gonna grab the other break. and. I'm gonna grab a basic water. We really need to free up the basic water, so... Um, as long as he doesn't Lysander, we're good. And... I'm good, Marilla, thank you. How are you? Um, <laughs> Hello, Brian. Thank you for stopping by. And Okay, so there's an end. That's pretty good news. Because that means my opponent will not, um, will not KO my break. And he doesn't even find, um, he doesn't even find a DC to attack. So, this is what I'm gonna do. Huh, is it? Um, okay, yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna max potion the damage, but not because I don't want Talonflame to get KO'd, but simply because I want to get more energy eventually off of the... Off of... Um, or rather, in order to use Giant Water Shuriken. And there's a victory. Yeah, this is how the matchup plays. And uh, that win and end round in Fort Wayne it was so freakishly unlucky. My opponent ran like a god, and I ran so bad. So, so bad. Um, but anyways, guys. Um, I believe, because we can't use Gyarados, Mega Gardevoir was the deck that people wanted to see. So let's go with Mega Gardevoir. And see how we do with that. Um, this is the regionals winning list, so obviously a really good one. <laughs> obviously a really, really good list. And yeah. Mr. Fantastic with what looks to be Evil Tall Garb. So that's obviously great news. Um, as long as we get a decent enough setup, we should be good here. <laughs> and there's a regular um, outside noise <laughs> that we always get. There are ambulances driving by. Yep, well, one ambulance driving by. So we do get to go first, which is great. Um, we start Rattata, which is okay. Um, we do have a Sycamore and Ultra Ball, so we should be able to set up here decently well. Might end up losing a Mega Turbo and a Fairy Drop, though. What? <laughs> what am I seeing? What am I seeing? What am I seeing? That's a Snorlax GX, guys. And... It's not pancakes. <laughs> it's actually not pancakes. Okay. So, let's Hoopa for two Guardies and a Shaman. Two Guardies and a Shaman. Yep, not... Well, it is pancakes, of course. But it's not like the version of pancakes we all know and love. And let's see what we get off of this Shaman to 3. Um, we also can Sycamore. And we get another Sycamore. 
Um, I mean, I guess I'll shave into one just to see if I can maybe hit the spirit link. <laughs> it's waffles. Yeah, apparently it's waffles. But no, we actually get a mega turbo. Which would be the second one we discard. But hey, who needs mega turbos? <laughs> Who needs mega turbos? We do find um, a spirit link. We also find a switch. We find trainer's mail, but I'm not gonna use any more resources for now. There's really no point. Um, I'd rather save them for the next turn if my opponent doesn't end us. And well, there's a level ball. What? <gasps> okay, so this is nowhere near. Um, <laughs> this is nowhere near um, Evil Tall Garbiter. So I don't know what the Dark type Pokemon is, but this is actually a Snorlax GX deck with Hypno. <laughs> a Snorlax GX deck with Hypno. Okay, guys. Okay. Yep, apparently only scrubs need Mega Turbos. Um, I definitely don't need it. Oh boy. Okay, so... I mean... I'll discard an N and a Dragonite. And I will go for the Mega. And then I will just end. This is a Darkrai list. Yeah, I don't know what Dark Pokemon my opponent has. Yeah, probably Darkrai EX, because that also benefits off of Hypno, right? Oh boy. I just, I really hope like the sleep condition doesn't end up, end up hurting us too, too bad. And we get a switch, but we can't find energy now. We cannot find energy. We find an escape rope, which I do like, because I really like to KO the drowsy so that we don't have to deal with like RNG, weird situations. I find a spirit link which is really nice because this way I can get almost a six card um, a six card shaman now am I going to risk the escape rope before the shaman I think so because I have one mega turbo and five basic um, basic fairy energy left which I only need one like seriously, game, please be nice, I just need one of six cards. I have 22 cards in my deck, left in my deck, so odds are in our favor. We do actually hit um, not only the Mega Turbo, but the energy, which is very nice. And we even find a Guardi and a Spirit Link. So my opponent says, well played. Um, I'm gonna discard everything that's not useful um, I don't mind not one hit KOing the Snorlax simply because I want to have um, some recovery or rather recovery of some sorts off of this super ad because we don't have another supporter to go off of next turn there's a fine Fury belt immediately there's another DCE so he's gonna deal 80 damage collapse and put himself to sleep and we could actually see pancakes used against us guys we could actually see pancakes used against us <laughs> yeah overkill is just like barely scratching the surface but my opponent will apparently be very kind and use n perhaps um does replace the stadium first and he does use end so I'm pretty happy to see that I am definitely pretty okay seeing that pretty pretty okay there's an ultra ball probably for another um, drowsy I would expect yep there's another drowsy so there's a collapse 90 damage he does flip heads so he wakes up therefore 
if he wants to go, he either needs a Hypno or he needs to use Pulverizing Pancakes. Now, I would really, really like to avoid both of those scenarios. <laughs> so, either I find a Lysander or, which I do, okay. So my opponent might be forced to use up his GX attack. Oh wow, he actually didn't even play the Drowsy. Wow, I'm generally surprised at that. I am generally surprised by that. Why wouldn't you play the Drowsy? I guess he really was scared of... Um, okay, he really was scared of the... Huh. Of the... Um, of the Lysander or even the Halucha. Now, would I benefit from KOing Shaman instead? Would I actually benefit from that? Um, he shouldn't have a way to put me to sleep next turn. Either he forgot or he didn't play it intentionally. Do I KO the Shaman or not? Um, no, I feel like, yeah, Snorlax is a threat, so even uh, even the two prizes, even though they're tempting. Um, let's see the Pulverizing Pancake, let's pressure my opponent into using Pulverizing Pancake. Um, there's the Drowsy now. There's the Darkness Energy. <laughs> okay, how much HP does my opponent have? 230, right? Okay, so he decides... To Lysander. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. There's the pulverizing pancake, guys. <laughs> There's the pulverizing pancake. Wow. Okay. Ugh. He does wake up. Now the pressure is on. Okay. Yeah, I just I need to KO the Snorlax, right? That's all I need to do here. Um, the Shaman top deck was really good. The Shaman top deck was really good. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm gonna return. Actually, the Cardi and the Tool. Um, okay. One Shaman. Nah. Guardi, Mega Guardi, and the Fairy Energy. And then I'm going to play down the Halucha. I will not activate its ability. And then I will play the Shaman. I will activate that ability but yeah we got to see pancakes guys okay and drawing the ratata just makes things even easier for us um, now he only has 80 hp left and i could light under i mean i could sycamore i don't think i need to i just despair right here and probably get rid of these three yep i get rid of those three and then, by not countering his stadium, he really can't stall me out with Hypno at this point in time because I can use All Night Party in order to even heal my Mega Gardevoir, which is awesome. And yeah, <laughs> pancakes do well. Take a look at the card. Um, Pulverizing Pancake is a GX attack, so it's like it, it has a pretty funny name and it deals 210 damage just straight up for five energy. That's what it does. Um, <laughs> that's why it got popular. So there's a Hypno. Um, there's a Baby Veltal. Oh, and it puts Snorlax, Snorlax to sleep. That's right. Wait, does it? Oh, yeah. This Pokemon is now asleep. Yep, that's true. Um, so, yeah, my opponent now decides to give up on the Hypno strategy. Which I am perfectly okay with. Um gonna attach there i will use up uh, my lysander to get a shaman that way both um like i can just win next turn by KOing drowsy or the Veltal. i'll be down to one price so yeah um <laughs> pretty dominating game i really wish we had played against the Veltal guard because my opponent's deck is a deck i will not see um at regionals unless i face it round one and then if I do face such a deck in round one, I would be really worried about my resistance <laughs> the rest of the tournament. But yeah, there we go. Hmm. 
Good tips on the Greninja mirror. Um, okay, what deck haven't I used yet? I Did I use Greninja already? Yeah, I did. So I'm only missing Eveltal Carp here. Um, tips on the Greninja mirror. Well, you always have to be very aware of the deck counts, but a little trick I like to do, um, like if I know a game is going to go to to a potential deck out, um, I mean I guess right now because deck out because people are playing Silent Lab or by Rough Seas, um, games will not go to deck out. But if for some reason you're up against a Rough Seas deck, or this is just like a tip in general, when you're playing against something that might be trying to to stall you or to try to deck you out or you might be trying to deck your opponent out but you don't want them to to notice oh wow we're up against pancakes once again <laughs> um is instead of counting the remaining cards in your opponent's deck you can actually try counting the cards that are in play okay so like you can off of your um i don't know from your regular what off of your regular perspective, like you can easily count like all the Pokemon your opponent has in play, all the energy your opponent has in play, the prize cards and the tool cards, right? That you can count like without doing anything beyond just staring at your opponent's um, at your opponent's side of the field. And hello, Yellow Solo, <laughs> thank you for stopping by. You just missed a Pancakes deck, like a full blown um, Snorlax GX Hypno deck. Uh, so yeah, like you can count those cards on the field by looking at your opponent's field without giving a tell and then you can ask to check the discard pile. Um, you can ask to check the discard pile and after and like while you're checking it, while you check the discard pile, you can count the cards in your head. So that's like a way to count your opponent's cards, um, like to count the, the cards that are in play without letting your opponent or telling your opponent that you are actually counting them so th like that's one of my best tips that i used to do whenever i was playing greninja mirror and i think works out really well and but yeah i mean it comes down to a lot of moonlight flashing <laughs> like my best tip is try to go first try to go first um mike ever i'm pretty sure yeah the meta game will change a lot with the sun and moon with the sun and moon set i think that's for sure and and yeah yellow swallow i am going to anaheim are you going to anaheim um i i i saw your stream or one of your videos where you said you went to san jose and played Groudon. so i'm guessing you're going to anaheim as well i definitely am so it'd be nice to to meet you in person over there it'd be really nice um <laughs> So yeah, like that tip for the deck out, wow, my opponent just had a soul crushing sycamore. <laughs> Two mega turbos, a sycamore, wow. And I got to start with a double Eveltal. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And Erod, yep, I'll see you at Athens, man. Definitely see you at Athens. Yeah, Anaheim should be pretty fun, Yellow. Anaheim should be pretty fun. Especially with all the sun and moon cards, like it's gonna be a completely, completely new meta game. <laughs> Friends, yeah. Okay. So despite the sycamore and getting rid of a lot of resources, my opponent has a very a very decent start. Um, we do have the Veltal going for us, so that's pretty good. Now I might see I could I could like not go like not bench the shaman <clears throat> there is an argument for that so that he can't mega evolve or even maybe retreat the trubbish at all but I feel like that's being too passive like way too passive and I should definitely try to set up my board instead more so, I mean, I, well, then maybe I should have elixir into the EX and not the other Fright Knight. But I'll take this. I will take this for now. Um, a fresh set of six cards. 
If he lies Anders in order to Mega Wolf, well, fair game to him. Um, now, I do want to keep the rest of the cards in my hand, though. Do I? <sighs> Maybe I shouldn't have benched the Trubbish. See, I want to ensure that I have... Um, and uh, that I get an attack off. I really want to ensure I get an attack off. So yeah, I'm gonna go for the Shaman. I need to draw a few more cards. I need to draw a few more cards. Um, okay, so this is better. Um, we find the end, which is really cool to see. And now, this darkness, I will attach to Veldal. I'm not a fan of having two Shaman and the Trubbish on my bench. I definitely don't think I should have benched the other Trubbish. And still no DCE. No sign of a DCE just yet. So let's just pass here. Um, I might be going to Anaheim. Wish I could have gone to Athens. I went to Orlando for VGC and Dallas for TCG this year. Sticking with TCG. Yeah, uh, Bromate, could you remind me your name? Um, because I know I met a lot of people in Orlando, but I don't recognize the the name. Um, but yeah, Orlando was definitely fun. A lot of fun. Um, what's the play for Anaheim as Sun and Moon drops right before? I'm tempted to just play some Rogue Hood Hood to enjoy Dunk. I'll be the guy at the bottom tables. Well, um, okay, is my opponent going to misplay here? Yep. Well, not necessarily a misplay, but he loses a turn. Okay. Since we have Garb, uh, I mean, might as well make my deck a little bit thinner. Um, I will also make it a little bit thinner by getting rid of the Timber Grunt. And the Center Lady, which I don't see being too useful. And whatever I grab here, I'm just going to end back into my deck. Um, I give my opponent a really big hand, but... Um, I just I want that DC and there we go there we go that's what I'm talking about um, so yeah I honestly don't know what the play is um, yellow I haven't I haven't taken a look at the um, at the Sun and Moon cards because I have Athens regionals this weekend so I I don't want to distract myself with cards that are not even released when I need to focus on doing well at this event. But, like, the Monday after the tournament, I will definitely, definitely be, um, be checking out, um, be checking out all the spoilers and everything and fig figuring out what's good and what's not and trying out some stuff. So, like, I know there's a lot of viable GXs. I know the, the evolutions are very decent. But aside from that, I generally don't, um, I haven't been paying too much attention, I'll be honest. I haven't been paying too much attention to the to the actual set. Um, like I see a few cards here and there. I've seen the Pokeballs and the Oranguru and things like that, but I haven't seen like I haven't thought in depth about the cards. So, um, uh, Jackson, I'm sorry. I I I don't remember you, but oh, he has a Lysander. Yikes! Um, I don't remember your your name but if you if we see each other at another regionals then definitely <laughs> come say hi i'm really sorry I, I just i meet a lot of people that it's hard to remember everybody okay so two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen okay so my opponent did um did ko a shaman but we can ko the the mewtwo back um alchemix rex thank you for for sticking around do you need ground beef for spaghetti <laughs> i believe you do um i mean it's a good idea to have <laughs> it makes it tastier i guess um, i'm not gonna mm, i'm not gonna attach the full stone to my garbiter because i might want to use um eveltal after this like the Fright Night Eveltal after I KO this Mega Mewtwo. And I hope I'm not counting this wrong. Yep, I'm not. Um, yeah, definitely come say hi if we see each other again, Jackson. And once again, I apologize. Um, 
And yeah, like I I know, I don't know. Like I'm really excited for Sun and Moon because I know there's a lot of very viable cards and I'll definitely be taking a look at all of the cards just after this weekend. Like my mind is on this weekend it's because th there's a lot um, like not only in this weekend, but in January, there's a lot at stake for me because like I've, I've been traveling. This, this will be the fourth tournament I traveled to internationally for Pokemon in the same season. And it's been a very long time since, like I've never done that. I'm investing like a decent amount of money and a decent amount of time for these events. And so far, like the dividends have not been there so far. Um, I've only made one top 64 and then I lost my win and in at Fort Wayne. And then I lost the match to make top 64 at London. So I've been coming up short. Um, quite a few times which have been really annoying and I really want to change that like I really 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 want to do well um, I feel like my opponent's Garbodor is definitely priced here um, so yeah I want to do well and I want to get those points because whenever they do make the cutoff for um, whenever they do make the cutoff for oh wow he might actually um okay so probably he had a no mega mutu left either um so yeah but whenever they do make the cutoff for the travel awards for australia if i do well this weekend i could actually get one of those travel awards so there's all that all of that is something that i really want to to focus on and two rookies are priced in the game i'm playing yep that happens <laughs> Um, do you want to play a game? Sorry, Erod, um, I'm trying to just like grind the ladder right now because um, like if I play against one person, it's only fair to play against um, other people as well and, and I've declined some people earlier on because I do want to Im uh, implement viewer battles but I, want to, I don't want to give anyone like preference if you know what I mean, um, I want to do it like randomly, like um, and fairly, and it's something like I don't have time right now. And it's also like if I add a ton of people and then they challenge me whilst I'm trying to record a video or something, then it gets a little bit in the way. So I will eventually have, um, I will eventually have, oh boy, I will eventually have viewer battles. But just for today, as I'm prepping for regionals, I just want to like. Get some games in for with the with the standard decks and everything. Thank you for for understanding. And hello, Ismail. Thank you for stopping by. Hello, Agent as well. Um, oh, that was you, Zarek. <laughs> I was playing against you right now with the Mega Mewtwo. Uh, but yeah, say hi to Ray for me. <laughs> say hi to Ray for me. Um, yeah, Chewie, you tell them. <laughs> Signing up for the Patreon program would be really appreciated, definitely. Okay, so I decided to play Scissor and we actually hit our absolute worst matchup. Our absolute worst, worst matchup. Um, okay. And yeah, for the Patreon program, like there are options to to get like um, um, individual play testing sessions and things like that. If you guys are interested in that, um, that can definitely be a thing. Um, and yeah, if, like I tried to put different options for to try to appeal to to everybody or to as many people as possible. So. Check it out and maybe you'll find something like um, that you like or maybe just to to support me that also works <laughs> but definitely is also very appreciated okay so if my opponent doesn't counter the parallel city and doesn't and i find garbodor or he doesn't find a volcanian i could actually oh boy nope never mind Oh. Okay, never mind. Now he just needs one fire energy. Uh, 
Damn, Flareon is so good. Damn, Flareon is so good. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Let's just move on to the next game. <laughs> Let's just move on to the next game. I was talking about how we might have a chance, and then my opponent just... Oh, I was gonna play Pidgeot, right? Um, yeah, how I maybe had a chance, and then my opponent just crushed my soul. <laughs> right there. Um... So yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean it happens, like if you're playing Scissor, the fact that I even had a very small chance to to maybe do something against that Flareon is really saying something, um, well, <laughs> but yeah, like you're, you'll never, like you'll win 1 out of 99 games if you want, but never anymore. Never any more than that. <laughs> but yeah. It's taking a while to find opponents. Maybe not many people are playing. And if you guys, like I mentioned, if you guys want to jump on the ladder, then maybe we can get paired up that way. Um, that's definitely something that could... Um, that could happen. And okay. So it seems like we're up against Mega Scissor now. <laughs> um... Eh, Metal sí, sí es una muy buena idea y sí lo he pensado, pero como ya lo han hecho, pues como Gaia Storm y cosas así y otros youtubers, pues siento que ya estaría, ya estaría de más, ¿no? Eh, entonces, bueno, pues sí lo puedo considerar si hay mucho interés, pero, pero siento que pues ya lo hicieron varios, entonces, eh, no sé, igual y sí valdría la pena para el tiempo entre, entre los torneos y todo eso. <risa> bueno, pues lo, lo tomaré muy en cuenta ¿Vale? Lo tomaré muy en cuenta Ok, so This is another idea I had um, You guys Maybe saw at Dallas That a, a full blown Damage change um, Mewtwo deck without Mega Mewtwo Just full out damage change <risa> Thank you guys um, full out damage change uh, Mewtwo deck was um, or did well I believe got 17th place or something like that or 12th maybe so we saw metal typing so my opponent either added Jirachi or he added Makiarna now I was personally thinking that maybe a Mewtwo Makiarna mixed deck might have been viable maybe even Mewtwo Scissor could have been viable maybe very big maybe but like just the basic EXs just the basic EXs but um, looks like my opponent also had like the same idea ish and check link thank you for the one dollar thank you so so much um muchísimas gracias por por la ayuda toda la ayuda eh, cuenta muchísimo y muchas gracias te prometo hacer mi mejor esfuerzo en el torneo <laughs> And yeah, we got our second donation ever. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. So, if this is Mega Mewtwo, we might... Nope. Okay. <clears throat> we won't enter a stalemate because... I damage him, he damages me. Yeah, it's like Pidgeot, but without any for max potions, indeed. And I mean, you need the three energy, but with max elixirs and everything, it's not, um, it's not too bad. But, 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 I'm very nervous. Okay, I will bench the Jirachi as well. Yeah, I feel like. <laughs> sí, muchísimas gracias. Un, muchísimas gracias, Shakilink. De verdad, un dólar, cero, eh, 50 centavos, todo, todo ayuda muchísimo. De verdad, muchísimas, muchísimas gracias. Ok, so um, maybe I can pull something off here by, by KOing, by, by like playing around this Mewtwo and then maybe setting up a Lugia. Um, I don't think Pidgeot's gonna be too useful here, but right now. 
I really want to target that shaman for an easy two prize cards. And okay, so I find the verse seeker and I find the lightning energy I wanted. So I'm pretty okay with this situation. Jirachi might come up to remove the DC, but that's also kind of fine. Um, yeah, the energy would be really weird in a Mewtwo Magyar now or Mewtwo Scissor deck. But I feel like Max Elixir really helps with that. Like it really, really would help with that. And the damage change also has a one colorless cost. So I'm sure you could like make it work somehow, some way. <laughs> Not entirely sure. Um, yeah, so he deals 60 damage and then I could potentially deal 70. And then his damage change like pretty much becomes kind of useless. Um, setting up Garb for either player is not that big a deal. Wow, he actually loses two Psychics. Actually decides to lose two Psychics. Um, okay, there's another Shaman. That's really... I wonder if it, what his other two cards are in order to sacrifice two Psychic Energy. Well, I guess he runs a ton of Psychic Energy, so maybe it's not that big a deal. There's another um, Fighting Fury Belt, there's a Trainer's Mail. Now, by targeting by, by targeting the Shaman, I will be left um, drawless, but then like Mewtwo is not an issue anymore to us. So. <laughs> I generally don't know what this matchup will come to. I generally don't know. He will deal 70 damage right now. Right? 70 damage. Then I KO the Shaman. And then he deals... A KO, actually. Then he potentially KOs me. And I am left with crap. So if he deals 70 and I deal 70 back... And then he damage changes forever. <laughs> and then he can't damage change, nor can he damage me. Huh. So maybe I shouldn't. Uh, but he got the flagrant. I saw him get a flagrant. Um, ¿Vas a jugar BGC? No, hoy no voy a jugar BGC. Hoy es solamente inglés eh, TCG. Okay. So what do I do here? <laughs> I generally have no idea. He's going to want to Team Flare Grunt me. So in theory, if I Flash Ray, he can't damage me. And damage change does nothing, right? And then... And then what? This is really weird. This is really, really weird. <laughs> um, I hope he Team Flare grunts the DCE instead of the DC instead of the Lightning. Yep, he goes for that. Okay, so I'm okay with that because I do have the DCE, and like he might not even go for the damage change. Apparently, um, there's a Float Stone, and that's. It's okay. Yeah, damage change does affect Jolteon. But I meant like we both have 70 damage, so it doesn't um, actually do anything. That's what I meant by by not af by doesn't affect Jolteon. Um, Trainer's Mail will find me a Fighting Fury Belt, which could potentially be useful. Um, uh, do I end here? Probably not. Like, it's really bad that I don't have any more attackers. Like, sure, he damage changes one. He damage change. He will use damage change once again, right? That's what he's going to do. I feel like he should be powering up Carpenter. That's his only way to win this match. Because he damage changes right now. And so I have 150 and he has 70. But then I attack him again. We both have 150, and then I attack him again and I KO. So, 
my main focus here is just to get three basic energy on Jolteon. And I feel like I should be able to win off of that. And he goes for a Sycamore instead of the Team Flare Grunt, which I'm really happy. And we will probably win by deck out before. Uh, ugh. You seriously run hammers and you flip freaking heads? Come on. Come on. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, now I need the DCE once again. My third DCE. Or I could max potion. Mm. I mean, what does my opponent have? He's used two Berserkers, three Sycamore, no Lysander, but his deck is pretty thin. I don't have... Um, no, I think my best play here is to try to find another DC. Uh, if I don't... Okay, I do. I can't believe he actually had... Um, yeah, I can't believe he actually had... Um, he has crushing cameras. Like, does he have four or does he have one? And Eddie M, thank you for becoming a table lever. Okay, so my opponent is apparently fed up of this, and he's gonna damage change onto the shaman. And get a KO that way. Which is not cool. Definitely not cool. But this opens up a, an attachment for us in order to prevent any more energy removal shenanigans. And I mean, I can also play the Lysander game. Um, if I had another basic energy in my hand, I would maybe KO Shaman, but maybe KOing Jirachi is the better choice here. So that I don't have to deal with Jirachi removing my energy, and I only have to worry about like Hammers and Team Flurry Grunt. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, attacking Mewtwo doesn't really accomplish much. He obviously won't damage change, and he doesn't want to... And he can't damage me with Shatter Shot. And Protissimo, thank you for becoming a, a table lever. Yeah, his deck is low, so I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to win this game by deck out, most likely. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get rid of Jirachi so that my DCs are maybe, maybe safe. Um, okay, another energy on Mewtwo is just good news for us um okay lysander garb be my guest um like as long as i'm as i leave jolton as the only pokemon in play for me as long as i don't misplay into benching anything else i should easily win this match i should actually easily win this match um like, I'm even tempted to attach the TCE just to prevent any more, um, any more weird things. And yeah, let's just start piling up the damage on the Mewtwo. Um, best case scenario for him, he damage changes 10 damage off of him. So there's a hammer, another heads. Ugh, so annoying. But get rid of the TCE. That's perfectly fine. That is actually perfectly okay. As long as he doesn't like get two more heads on every hammer or something. As long as we find energy, we will be okay. And it's more resources he's actually wasting. Versus Seeker, Team Flare, Grunt. Okay, now I'm worried. Now I'm actually worried. He removes the other DC. That's two crushing hammers and three versus Seeker. So he still has access to one versus Seeker. Off of my next Sycamore, I really should be able to... I really should be able to to find another energy, right? I should. Ah, the Max Potion, so tempting. 
but I'm not going to play it. Um, I'm going to Ultra Ball and grab something just to thin out my deck. Wow, there's three energy left. Uh-oh. There's only three energy left, guys, in my deck. Can I hit one of those? No, of course I don't. <laughs> uh. Watch my opponent have his last first seeker for a Lysander for game. Just watch this. Or he can flip his third heads in a row and completely seal the game. He can also do that. Wow. Crooks Brooks, thank you for stopping by. Um, four. 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 Four heads. Because why the heck not? Four heads. <laughs> I mean, it actually doesn't matter because my opponent flipped all four heads. That deserves an angry face. That's just ridiculous. Um, thank you, Mike, for the good luck. Um, good night. Ah. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Like, I can center lady and attach. My opponent is down to two prize cards. There's nothing I can do here. There's actually nothing I can do. Ah, <laughs> uh, this was so ridiculous. Like, I survive with 10 HP here. And so what? My opponent just needs another psychic energy. Ugh, four out of four, come on. Four out of four. In a game where we should have dominated. In a game where we generally should have dominated. Ah. <sighs> Wow, he's Sycamores into his last two cards, which has a Psychic Energy, which is enough for the Gale. <sighs> yeah, I'm like, I'm the same. Like, if I hit two Crushing Hammers out of four, um, like if I hit average flips, uh, like that's really good for me. <laughs> that's way beyond expectation. And then my open just clearly easily flips four heads. <sighs> So annoying, so annoying. Um, I believe I was out of max potions. I believe I was. <sighs> that was so bad. <laughs> and at Sarchi1985, thank you for becoming a table lever. Um, this is probably the last game. Um, this is probably the last game, guys. Um, <laughs> Captain, obviously. Um, this is the last game that I will be playing tonight. Um, I'm getting pretty tired. And I need some sleep because I have to work early tomorrow. And I have to get up to go to the gym as well. And I also need to, like, prepare everything for a trip. Make my bag and everything because I leave um, very early in the morning. On Friday. I have to be at the airport at like 6 a.m. because it's an international flight. It leaves at 9, but I have to be there at 6. Um, at least there won't be any traffic, but it's still kind of annoying to have to wake up that early. <laughs> I'm definitely not a fan. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We shall see. And we're up against Mewtwo once again. So if this is Mega Mewtwo, we are going to lose.
if it's the other Mewtwo with four crushing hammers. Apparently, we are losing as well. And Crooks Brooks, I'm going to Atlanta. I'm going to Atlanta in order to play in Athens Regional. In the Athens Regional Pokemon TCG tournament this weekend. That's where I'm going. But nope, it's actually the damage change Mewtwo. Like, it's the, the same deck we just faced off against. So that's pretty good. Um, the Silent Lab is very annoying though. And. A trade, sí, sí habrá Pokédex esta semana en español y en inglés. And thank you guys so much for wishing me, um, for wishing me luck at regionals. Okay. So trainer's mail finds us a ninja boy. But now. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, gamer. Um, definitely, if you see me, come say hi. I'll probably w be wearing this <laughs> this blue Nike um, pullover. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ninja boy my Trubbish into Jolteon. Ah. Where's the Jolteon? <laughs> <laughs> Where is the Jolteon, guys? Where is the Jolteon? Where is the Jolteon? <laughs> Why do you do this to me, deck? Why? Um, <sighs> I can't believe this. I genuinely, genuinely cannot believe this. Um. Which current deck do you think has the best chance to stay at the top once Sun and Moon releases? Well, um, as I've mentioned a bit earlier, I generally haven't seen the um, the Sun and Moon cards, so I cannot give you like a realistic um, a realistic um, answer because I haven't been paying too much attention. To those cards um strict nine wow thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much strict nine that's awesome thank you so much for the donation i really really appreciate it um, i'll definitely i don't personally drink um so i won't be having a beer but i'll have a gallon of milk for you how about that i do drink milk <laughs> so i'll have a glass of milk for you or a gallon or whatever but thank you so much i really really appreciate it um, so yeah, Captain, obviously, um, I don't, um, I haven't seen the cards. What? This deck runs hammers? Are you kidding me? Do all Mewtwo decks run hammer? Um, so I can't tell you, honestly, like, once I come back from Athens, I will definitely focus on checking out the new, the new cards and making sure I, um, and making sure I... A gallon of milk challenge and stream. I would definitely do that. Uh, like I love milk. I absolutely love milk. Um, <laughs> so so yeah. Once I come back from Athens, I will definitely take a look at all of the. Um, I will take a look at all of the, the 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 sun and moon cards. Maybe make an analysis video. A lot of people are requesting it, and and then I'll be able to answer that. Um, like truly or truthfully okay finally i get a parallel cd finally so 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 let's discard these two cards let's find our shaman and get something going here um <laughs> a gallon of milk challenge and screen momo milk sponsorship that would be great as well <laughs> um, i'm not gonna play the center lady because because it doesn't really accomplish too much. Um, okay. Lysander though. Lysander kind of does accomplish something maybe. So let's Feather Lance. And maybe I can KO the active Mewtwo. That would be awesome. Um, <laughs> Evil Tal is going to get another reprint. Do you know so or do you think so? Ugh. He has a float. He has the energy. Yeah, we're gonna lose this match. Okay, 
I don't want to just leave the... Like, this is a very disappointing way to lose the match. So, let's... Um, yeah, yeah, maybe not a gallon, but... Like, I can definitely drink a, a high amount of milk. Like, I have I have a very high tolerance. Um, we'll figure it out. Like, if I, if I win regionals... If I top cut, if I top eight regionals, I will do something milk related on the channel. Like uh, live on Twitch, and then it will get uploaded to the channel. Um, yeah, I'm 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 okay with the Velta, honestly. I'm o I'm actually okay with the Velta. Wow, so there's a lot of Mewtwo guys. There's a lot, a lot of Mewtwo, which I'm really surprised to see. Um, does Greninja still have a good matchup against Mewtwo even without playing Faded Towns? Um, I don't think Greninja has ever had a good matchup against Mewtwo, honestly. Um, I feel like Mewtwo players, a lot of them don't know how to play the matchup correctly. Um, because you don't need to go for the Mega. Wow, look at that hand, at the quad Greninja. Um, <coughs> yeah, like if you just set up a uh, Mewtwo with damage change and like with the three psychics like we were just seeing and with Carpenter, you never actually get to to KO. So like the faded towns are pretty much irrelevant. Um do I want to keep this hand? Okay, I will keep this hand. Just do not give any more mulligans to my opponent. Um play a milk tank deck. <laughs> I've already played Mill Tank decks actually. I've played Butterfree Mill Tank twice for the channel. Um, so yeah, I don't think Mewtwo is ever a good matchup for Greninja. Like the reason I've beat Greninja, uh, like, sorry, the reason I've beat Mewtwo in the games I've played at tournaments is because I outplay my my opponents between, um, like, if they're going for the damage change strategy, I will just stop attacking them. And I will wait until I get my Lysander and then double Lysander the Carpenter to activate my abilities. Uh, but that takes a really long time and a really good um, Mewtwo player should definitely play around that and set up a second Carpenter, a third even, etc. Um, wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why do you do this to me, Greninja? Okay, at least we have Talonflame to maybe do something. So yeah, um, and Mewtwo players are getting smarter, like, I, you guys should definitely, or especially you Gamer Lalo, Gamer Alo, sorry, um, you should check out in someone's PC.com, like the website run by Ross, um, Ross Lapar and the other guys, um, go there and then listen to the Dallas podcast, like when they interview Igor Costa, um, yeah, exactly. Um, like, listen to how to Igor Costa's tournament report, and listen to his tips on how to play Mega Mewtwo against Greninja. Like, even if you are playing Greninja, um, it'll give you insight into the mindset of the of the Mewtwo player. And I feel like it's a really a really good listen. Like, I listened to it just today, and I found it really enlightening. Like. It's very clear why or how he's able to to consistently make um, top cut. Like it, he's he's really on a really high level of play. Um, he's really good, really, really, really good. And it's a really good listen. It's only like half an hour, so it's not too bad. And like you can be, I don't know, playing some matches, or you can be just um, doing something else, and then. And then just um, listening to that, and I don't know. I really enjoyed listening to it. The Super Odd podcast, like huge props to him. Okay, so we are actually getting something going here. Um, I'm gonna keep the, or rather, grab this Splash and grab an Enhanced Hammer because that Mewtwo is starting to get a little bit out of control. And I don't want that. Um, I can wait another turn to get the Frogadier. It's really like there's no hurry. My opponent is draw passing. But I really want to slow down that Mewtwo. I really like 
you can see my opponent is not going for the strategy maybe he's not drawing the the psychic energies but he discarded one so it's <laughs> um thank you muchas gracias shaki link por la buena suerte y por por la donación nos vemos um so yeah it's um like i don't think my opponent is playing mega mewtwo the right way like he should be so we have that going for us and yeah the new giratina is a big issue like the new giratina is definitely um the reason why you play silent lab it's definitely the reason why you play silent lab okay so my opponent was holding on to the stadium and the floatstone he got the end but that hoopa um should be should be an easy target there is a psychic energy so no garp also like you, for that strategy to work like the damage change strategy you absolutely need carpenter without carpenter you are in a pretty okay position and my opponent can't even find the mewtwo just yet which is pretty good for us um let's grab the frog at here but yeah that's why i'm running silent lab and all the ninja lists that have been winning tournaments back to back um are running this as well um simply because or rather to make sure that um that you don't get screwed by the by the new giratina that's why they're using um all si all silent lab i personally prefer rough seas um i should have been using rough seas i feel like since the beginning <laughs> but since that's not the case um uh I really didn't want him to do that. Oh, but he chose to discard his bench. I'm okay with that. And Calvin MLG, thank you for becoming a table lever. Like, I'm okay with losing the Frogadier right now and then just going into Talonflame to deal some damage, some more damage, and setting up my Greninjas. I am perfectly okay with that. Um, yeah, you can try to run them out of Shrine of Memories, but the thing is, they don't need to Mega Evolve. They can use this Mewtwo, the one that's currently active on the screen they like greninja attacks twice for 80 damage that's 160 and then they can just keep damage changing like you never ko them seriously listen to the listen to the <clears throat> to the podcast it's very very enlightening very very enlightening um and maybe um I igor does a better job at explaining than than i do um alolan monk it's not unreasonable but it's just better to have the silent labs um running a stage one and then being forced to use like um like float stones or something so that alolan monk is not um stuck in the active slot like it's not unreasonable but it's like starmie um in greninja it's not something you need or something you really like i don't know want to use um okay so we have no we haven't yet used a single supporter card other than lysander so i'm gonna lysander the mewtwo to try and buy some time to set up my greninjas and i'm gonna grab this greninja and an n or an ace trainer i'm gonna grab the ace trainer because if my opponent ko's talonflame then i punish him harshly if he doesn't ko talonflame then I can town flame once again so so yeah that's like the logic behind um running silent lab or whatever and okay so he does he will manage the ko which i am okay with um and yeah on the youtube chats vespiplum will be back with sun and moon um shinotic and timer ball will bring it back you might be right um there's definitely a chance for that okay another n um Mug is better if you need the ability lock active during their turn because yeah um exactly like Mug is good if there were other problematic um basic pokemon that used abilities that you wanted to stop and then Mug would have um more merit to it but then like shamans get you stopped so quickly that even if you wanted to stop shaman with Mug, like your Mug is lower than the shaman so it doesn't really make a difference um okay let's play the enhanced hammer now i really really need more greninjas here i really need more greninjas 
So I'm gonna end, but I need my breaks and I need my regular Greninjas right here, right now. Nope. Ugh. This is really annoying, guys. And I drew my two super rods. Okay, I'm gonna have to give up the Froakie here. Ugh. This is getting really, really difficult. Um, yeah, Vespiplum might be viable with the, like some combination of GXs, interesting GXs. Um, I don't think Vespiplum is is dead yet. Um, it might see play this weekend. But I do feel like um, <laughs> I do feel like the game is gonna change a lot with Sun and Moon, and I also think that that's the reason why Pokemon hasn't streamed too many regionals yet. I feel like once Sun and Moon hits, like they'll probably stream Anaheim. They streamed San, San Jose, so Anaheim is pretty nearby, so it would make sense for them to stream that. And it's also the first tournament with Sun and Moon TCG cards available, so I'm sure they would want the hype. Um, built off of that to or to use the hype that's gonna build off of that um, did I upset the RNG gods I believe I did <laughs> but I believe I upset them like back in 2004 or something because um, they made sure I did not win worlds in 2005 and then they made sure it took me over 10 years to be national champion of Mexico <laughs> And yeah, um, <laughs> the the TCG gods are definitely um, not happy with me. And yeah, I agree. If if um, TPCI wants to to make sure or to try and get like Pokemon to be taken seriously, like you need to have coverage of every tournament, at least in the U.S., every single tournament. Um, where are my Greninjas guys? <laughs> Not even a... I keep drawing the two super odds, but I don't even get basic energy. Ugh. This is just ridiculous. Well, I only have one Greninja, true, but I have two dive balls and two ultra balls left still. So where are they? Where are they? And where are my basic, basic energy? Um, so yeah, like they should stream every regionals. I hope, um, I hope they stream more. Like they've only streamed one regional, is it? San Jose? Yeah, they've only streamed one regional, like themselves. So hopefully they stream Anaheim and then they stream something like Missouri and um, Utah and then Seattle. They should definitely stream Seattle. Um, Puka is great, um, but some of the other casters could probably be replaced. Um, I agree. Um, I feel like they really need to to get in contact with players that are more in touch with the current like meta game and situation of things. Um, I enjoyed a lot streaming the the Fort Wayne Top Thirty Two. I really enjoyed it, and I hope eventually in the future I get a chance. Like, I feel like my YouTube channel is a pretty good resume to be considered for for a streaming gig. And then... Um, I don't know. Um, I'm going to cry. My opponent hit... I... Master Broda, thank you for becoming a table lever. My opponent hit his last DC. And I have two Greninja prized. I could never, I couldn't hit a water energy. And of course the next card is a dive ball. Of course it is, because why the heck not? Why the heck wouldn't it be a dive ball? <sighs> Gosh, this is so bad. Okay, let's... I think I have to play both Super Odds right here and right now. Um, put all of these cards back. Okay, and now I'm going to end. And I really need my other Greninja, but I just made my deck super good, or super big. Okay, but I do get it, thankfully. 
You're using up all, all your bad luck now, so, so you'll wreck them in Georgia. I really, really hope so. <laughs> I definitely really, really hope so. Okay. <sighs> See, the thing is... I need to deal 80 damage here. As long as my opponent doesn't play a Hex Maniac or an N and the N screws us pretty badly, um, I should win here because he pretty much went all in on the active Mewtwo. So sure he KOs the other one and then I Mega Evol I mean I break evolve and there's the Sycamore, okay. Um, I break evolve and then I use my ability on the active and then I attack once again and I get a knockout. And off of my two prizes, hopefully I can free up some Greninjas. And then I can Giant Water Shuriken to get you the bench, Mewtwo as well. Oh boy. So, here we go, guys. Here we go. Um, okay. I'm going to attach this. I'm going to use my ability, of course. And now an end would be better than the Ace Trainer, but um, I don't have an end. Do I use up my Dive Ball? Mm, no. I'm gonna keep the Dive Ball. Um, what do you think of Igor Costas to one card line in Mega Mewtwo? I really like it. I honestly really like it. Um, I do think it's, um, it's like the correct play. Um, okay, I'm gonna... Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have ke kept the max potion. I should have kept the max potion. Ugh, that was a really bad play. Anyways, I'll grab the froggy. Um, yeah, two one guard. It's like it's like the bare minimum. It's risky. It's definitely risky, but it's the bare minimum. Like you would never go lower than two one. One one is like way too risky for me um 2-2 two, two is safe Ugh, where's my freaking where are my greninjas um so 2-1 to me would be like the absolute bare minimum and he's running a hex maniac aside from that so he kind of compensates a bit there um i would definitely feel more comfortable with 2-2 two, two, but if if the space is an issue, then I can see why um, if Mewtwo is not like absolutely crucial for you to win. Oh, Hex. That's what I did not... Oh, I shouldn't have used up my, my Max Potion. That was really dumb. That was actually really dumb. That was actually really, really dumb. Ugh. Okay, I I need to go with Froki here, and I need to trust the Bubble Guts. <laughs> no. Ugh. This is really bad. This is really, really bad. Um, no, he didn't take out the Hex for a weakness policy. He had the Hex in his regionals winning list. I'm pretty sure he had the Hex in the regionals winning list. Okay, I'm not giving up, guys. I am generally not giving up here. Um, I will just Giant Water Shuriken. I will KO the Bench Mewtwo. Now, I have two Greninja prized. I just need one of them. I just need one Greninja off of its prize cards. There's one. And there's a silent lab, which obviously doesn't matter. And now, now what I need is, um, I need to not bench something that could be a target. Okay, I get the max potion. My brain has one card in his hand. And let's do Moonlight Slash. I need one basic water energy to win this match. So any sort of supporter top deck would be great. Any water energy top deck would be great. We still have five of them. And 
A fisherman would also be great. But no bits of town flame. Okay. So let's retreat into the break. Let's max potion. And now if my opponent doesn't top deck um, a Lysander, we should win this game. Um, like make a 6 to 1 comeback or 6 to 2 comeback. Please don't top deck the Lysander. Please. Please. Looks like... Oh, no. That's a happy face. No. GG's are reg. Wow. Wow. Ah, <sighs> oh, come on. <laughs> Wait, guys, wow, okay, Gerardo Santana, are you in chat, are you in chat, and Richard Todd, are you guys in chat, I mean, I'm not even tilted, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's been a rough night, <laughs> definitely been a rough night, but, I mean, let's get this out of the way before Athens, I guess. Um, are any of you Richard Todd or Gerardo Santana? Please say so in the chat if you can. And wow, like, thank you guys so, so much um, for the donations. I don't know why they're not appearing on, on the stream. I don't know why they didn't appear. But thank you guys so, so much. Um, you really didn't need to. I, I really appreciate it, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Um, if any of you know who Gerardo Santana or Richard Todd is, um, please let them know that I did notice the, the donations. I just saw them and I'm very, very thankful for it. Um, I really appreciate it. And, and yeah, I'm just going to wait a little bit to see if they appear in chat. Otherwise, um, I think that's going to be that's going to be it from me um, today. Um, and like thank you thanks to all of you guys who are here and who are supporting me and who are watching the stream i really really appreciate it guys like <laughs> it's been a rough night i'm not gonna lie it's been a rough night in terms of results but i feel like doing this live stream and interacting with you guys at the same time um like helps me to keep like a more level headed um attitude which i'm sure you guys know that maybe sometimes in the videos um Yeah, those are the real names. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be saying the real names. Um, I'm okay. So, well, it's because then one donation didn't appear on the on the stream, but oh no, they both appeared. I'm seeing this wrong. Okay, yeah, the, uh, both of you appeared on stream, and I thank you both of them. I thanked both of you, so thank you so much, um, Captain. Obviously, thank you for becoming a table a table lever. Um, and yeah, sorry, that was a really weird game. Um, thank you so much for the for the good luck wish, and thank you guys for being here. I'm Crook Brooks. I'm I won't be streaming tomorrow. My because of the videos and everything, I only stream for now once a week in English on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. CST time zone. I stream every Wednesday at that time. And then on Fridays, unless something comes up like I'm flying to regionals, um, in Spanish. So, 
Um, I do want to stream more, of course, but um, for the time being, um, I'm only streaming on Wednesdays. Um, because I do have a, a job and the YouTube channel and everything. If I didn't do as many videos and I focused more on streaming, then I would be able to do more more streams. But I really like how like the channel is growing and Twitch is also like its little brother now that's coming along. So so yeah, thank you guys for wishing me best of um, for wishing me good luck. <laughs> I feel like I I really will need it with the current um, with the current way I've been drawing, but. 2017 is a brand new year. Um, I already won a tournament. I hadn't won a tournament this season. I won a 29 person league challenge, which isn't much, but um, helped a little bit with my confidence because I hadn't won a tournament since um, since nationals. And yeah, um, I'm really excited for regionals. I really want to do well. And there's a lot in play. Like that this weekend and then the weekend of the 28th and the 29th of January are going to be two really big weekends for us um in terms of a potential trip to australia and um in terms of maybe even getting closer or grabbing the invite like i could potentially qualify for worlds this month so it all depends a lot depends on this weekend so i'm really excited i'm really nervous but i'm a very competitive person so i love the the idea of competing at the highest level and going to regionals is definitely the way to do it so um maybe i'll see some of you guys there thank you all for your support i really really appreciate it you guys are awesome and i will be leaving now to finish up on some things i have to do for the channel really quickly upload monday's video which i already recorded and <laughs> which is actually um well, i'm not gonna spoil i'm not gonna spoil anything but monday's video is like an endurance video and you'll see why when i announce the the deck that's going to get featured um on sunday but yeah monday's video is going to be it was a very interesting game i just i will just say that it was a very very interesting game like an out of the norm game with an out of the norm deck and then um on wednesday i'll feature whatever deck i do decide using on at athens and hopefully it's a first place deck <laughs> and yeah that will be all for me today, guys. Thank you so, so much. I love you guys. I hope you guys will come back next Wednesday. Um, Metal, muchas gracias por desearme suerte. And I will keep you guys updated on my um, regionals adventure over Facebook and Twitter. So follow me there if you haven't yet. I'm five people away from getting to a thousand followers on Twitter, which is also a very cool milestone. And yeah. 29, pe uh, 29 at a league challenge was definitely pretty good um, and it's because the prices are so good like the store just like takes the the cash and then it offers it back in in product so I want to two of the evolutions um, blister not the blisters the, um, the Charizard and Blastoise box I forgot the elite trainer box I want two of them for 10 bucks so i mean for five bucks so that was a pretty good deal and yeah that's gonna be it for me guys thank you so so much for being here thank you so so much for watching and i will catch you guys in my videos um coming up tomorrow we have no english video but on friday we have pokedex which is actually a really cool it's a legacy deck if you guys are interested in the legacy format friday is a legacy nine tails deck and then on Monday, we have another interesting video. And I'll update you guys on Facebook and Twitter about how I do. Thank you guys so much and bye-bye.